welcome everybody to Kids Online. If this is your very first time with us, oh, we are so grateful that you tuned in today and that you are sitting snug like a bug at home watching us. This is Lolo and this is Vicky and I'm Liana and we are part of the kids team here at Grace Point. We look after the naught to grade three kids at Kids Church. Now, before we start, and so for you guys who are new, the first thing we do, because we know all the kids who had birthdays are sitting and jump, well, I don't think they're sitting down, they are jumping up and down to see their names on the birthday board. Without any further ado, let's go to the birthday board and see who had a birthday this week. We'll be back right now. And we pray that you had a very special day on your birthday and if it's today I hope it's very special and we hope that you got um, spoiled rotten you got the cake you wanted the gifts you wanted oh we just hope that you had a very blessed day on your birthday Right, now boys and girls, before we go to praise and worship with Kezi, we need to do one more very important thing, and that is to give our offering. Now, we have always spoken about this and we made you guys understand what is offering about. This is where you thank God for what he has given you. This is your way of thanking him for all the toys you have, the clothes you have, for mom and dad, for having a house, for having a bed to sleep in, for having pets. This is your way of saying, hey God, thank you so much. I can't do a lot because I'm a little child, but what I can do is give some of my, we usually say 10% of our money. So if you get 10 Rand pocket money, you just have to pop one Rand into your little piggy ba uh, basket. Um, and you know what I know a lot of kids are doing? They keep on putting their money in and when it's full, they give it to their parents and they ask them to put the money into Grace Point's account. And that's what you can do, especially if you're new today. That's why we do offering and why we encourage you to give. Give something of yourself. And you know what, if you don't have money, that's also okay. Then give something that you can. Maybe you can go and clean someone's yard for them. Wash somebody's car carry their groceries. We don't always have to give money, but we have to just give something back in a way to say thank you to Jesus. Right, I'm going to ask Vicky this morning to pray over all the money that I know you guys are generously and your parents give to um, Grace Point. Let's put our hands together and close our eyes. Thank you, Vicky. Father God, we thank you for the money that is in front of us. We ask you to bless it so that it can do your work to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. Thank you, Vicky. Right, guys, get up. Are you ready? Stretch to the left, stretch to the right. Oh, okay, let's go to Kezi and do worship. We'll see you back after worship. Good morning everybody and welcome back to another Worship with Kezi. My name is Kezia, but you can call me Kez or Kezi, whatever you are comfortable with. And what is your name? Well, it's very nice to meet you. And if you are here for the very first time, hi! I'm so excited you decided to join us this morning. I hope you have fun, but most importantly, I hope you learn something new. And for all of you who have been joining us for the past few weeks. Hi everyone. I'm so excited you guys are back. I hope you have fun and learn something new as well. So today's songs are two very very easy and fun songs. The first one is called the joy joy joy. So we're gonna go. I got the joy 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 down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Way down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. Said I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. I got the Peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? 
down in my heart way down in my heart i got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart way down in my heart to stay and i'm so happy so very happy i got the love of jesus in my heart and i'm so happy so very happy i got the love of jesus in my heart now this part the words are a bit fast so we're gonna slow the moves down. <laughs> so we're gonna go one, two, down in my heart, way down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. And that's the first song. So go, are you guys ready? Perfect, let's go. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. What else you got? I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? So we in the way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful look of my blessed so redeeming way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. that that's so much fun everybody because i know i had so much fun with you guys so our second song is called your love keeps following me and it's super easy and super fun so we're gonna go you loved me as you found me your love keeps following me you wrapped your arms around me your love keeps following me by grace i am what i should be your love keeps following me. You saw me as I could be. Your love keeps following me. And it's higher. And it's wider. And it's deeper. And I know this one thing. Wherever I go, your love keeps following me <laughs> and those are all the moves so are you ready i'm sorry i can't hear you i ask are you ready so i think let's go
And that is all that I have for you guys today on Worship with Kizzy. I hope you guys had so much fun because I know I had so much fun with you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Welcome back, boys and girls. Are you ready for our story today? Now, before we do our story, we just have to remember what was our story last week. Now, guys, do you remember what was that tree again, you two? What was that tree? That the fig tree. Ah, oh, yes. And what did we call that fig tree? What was it called? The, the, you, you, useless? The, useless the, yes, the useless tree. Because remember, boys and girls, this tree was planted in beautiful soil. It got sun, it got water, and all it was doing, it was just getting more leaves but no fruit. Mm -hmm. And then our farmer wanted to cut it out and told the, the gardener to cut it out and to throw it away and plant something different. But what did we realize last week? What was our whole theme about last week? Jesus does the... Opposite. Opposite. Yeah. And it's the same thing. You know, we think he's going to not love us. He's not going to care about us. He's going to throw us away when we do th bad things or when we don't worship him or we don't read our Bibles enough. And he says, no, 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 no. That's not how I work. I died on the cross for you. I took away all the bad things that you've done. Now, every time you do a bad thing, you have to say, sorry, we can't just now go and continue doing bad things just because Jesus died on the cross for us, boys and girls. No, no, no. We must try because we know what he's done for us. We must always try to do good. But if we do slip up, it's okay. We can just ask God to forgive us. And so he does the opposite. He doesn't cut us off. He doesn't throw us away, boys and girls. He says, I love you. I'm going to give you another chance to grow and to become a strong tree that will bear fruit. And remember, what was that fruit called again, boys and girls? Do you guys know? Um, boys and girls, what was that fruit called? What is the Bible fruit called? Um, the <laughs> oh my oath, fruit of the spirit. spirit. Yes, we don't walk around with bananas and apples, boys and girls. <laughs> my goodness, these two. <laughs> no, no, no. The fruit of the spirit, boys and girls, is like um, joy and peace and love and kindness that we show and that we share with. Others. Oh, yeah. Now today our story continues with this whole seed story and, and soil story, but it's a little bit different. This day, today we learn about different types of soil. Now we know from our lesson last week, boys and girls, that we have to be in good soil to grow. Now, unfortunately, in our lives, there are soils that are not so good for us. And so we're going to listen to a story about a farmer who was sowing seeds in his land. Now, we don't know what he was sowing. He could have been sowing millies. He could be sowing flowers. He could be sowing seeds of vegetables. We don't know. But what we do know is that he was just... Now, in the olden days, let me just stop there because I have to tell you this. In the olden days, they didn't have the big machines that they have these days to plant seeds. No, the farmer had to walk. He had his seeds in a, in a bag and he took it and he would sow it like this, boys and girls, everywhere. And unfortunately, what happened was some of those seeds fell on places where it couldn't grow. Now, let's go to our story, to our storybook corner, and let's hear about the sower and where his seeds fell. Are you ready? Right, get comfy and let's zoom to our storybook corner. See you now now. Hello boys and girls and welcome to my story about the parable of the sower. We find this story in Matthew, Mark and Luke in the New Testament. Now one day, Jesus was teaching the people and there were so many that he had to climb into a boat while the crowd sat on the shore. That is by the sea on the sea sand, boys and girls. Jesus spoke to them as the boat bobbed up and down on the water. Jesus told them a story called a parable. One day Jesus said, a farmer planted some seed in the ground. He didn't do it very carefully, but instead threw the seed all over the field so that it landed in lots of different places. Now, some of the seeds, said Jesus, landed on a path and did not get planted in the soil. 
Soon the birds came along and began to eat the seeds. Some of the seed, said Jesus, fell on stony ground. The seed could not put down many roots, and when it tried to grow up out of the ground, the sun began to burn it. Soon the plant that was growing began to wither, shrivel up, and die. Some seed Jesus fell onto better ground and began to grow into a plant, but there were lots of thorns and weeds in the soil, and soon they began to choke the plant and stopped it from growing. The other seeds, said Jesus, fell on good soil. It grew and grew, and a great harvest came that the farmer could cut down and eat. Later on that day, when all the other people had gone, the disciples of Jesus asked him about the story of the farmer and the seeds, because they didn't quite understand what it really meant. Jesus began to teach them. He said, the seed is the word of God. Now, boys and girls, the word of God is our Bibles. And that is how Jesus speaks to us through his word, the Bible. Now, when a person believes something God says, it gets planted in their hearts. Words like God is love, God forgives, God saves, God heals, God protects Oh, wonderful words to hear. Now, some people, said Jesus, hear the word, these wonderful words from the Bible, but do not understand it. And just like the birds who stole the seed, the devil comes and steals the word of God from their hearts before it can be planted and be rooted deep, deep, deep inside of their hearts. Other people, say Jesus, believe the word of God and plant it in their hearts. But then some of their friends and family make fun of them and even bully them because they believe in God. They feel sad and afraid and stop believing God's word, just like the plants that shriveled up in the sand and in the sun. And then other people, say Jesus, they believe the word of God and it begins to grow deep in their hearts. But they come, become very, very busy going to work and to school and being with their friends and family. And finally, they forgot when they forget about God's word and stop believing in it just like the plant that was choked by the thorns and weeds. And lastly, Jesus said, there are people who understand and believe the word of God and it gets planted very deep in their hearts. They keep believing it even when they are made fun of or when things get too busy or when they for and they don't forget about it when they get busy. Just like the seed that became a great harvest, they become strong, brave Christians who know how much God loves them and they love to tell others about him. There are some very important words that God spoke a long time ago in the Bible. If you believe that them, they can be planted in your heart today and you can become a strong, brave Christian. For God so loved the world, boys and girls, that he gave his one and only son that who ever believes in him we shall not perish that means we shall not die but we will have eternal life in heaven with jesus so boys and girls this week let's make sure that we read our bibles and let those words take deep roots in our hearts let's keep on believing don't let busyness or people Take us away from who and what we are in God. Boys and girls, have a wonderful week. I'll speak to you again next week in the Storybook Corner. Bye! 
Welcome back, boys and girls. Did you enjoy our story about the farmer and his seeds? Wow, that is amazing. I just love this story because it makes me think, and I'm wondering if it makes Lolo and Vicky think, about how is the soil of my heart? Because you see, boys and girls, what this story was, it's a parable. It's not a true story in the sense of that it really happened, but Jesus uses everyday things that's happening around us to explain something that is deeper within us. So those seeds that he's talking about in our lives is the Word of God. And it tells, what does the Word of God do again? Do you guys remember? Yes, it tells us how to live, what to do, what not to do. It tells us how much God loves us. It tells us that God heals us, He protects us, He forgives us. Now, boys and girls, if we don't read the Word of God, if we don't read the Bible, how are we going to know what God wants to tell us? And the more importantly, we won't be able to grow in God. Now, why Jesus told this parable, this story, was He wanted us to realize that sometimes, when we hear the word of God, four things happen. Now I'm going to go down, we're going to ask Lolo and Vicky to help us with this and to help us remember the story. And then as they remember the story, I'm going to explain to you what happens when our seeds, the word of God, falls on the path or on rocky ground or between thorns or on good soil. But let's go and ask v Vicky and Lolo to help us to remember the story. Right, who wants to remind me because you know I'm very old. I'm 180 <laughs> years old guys. So I've already forgotten the story. Tell me what happened to the first seeds? I think when a farmer went out and planted the garden, as he was throwing the seeds on the ground, some fell on the hard path yes. nearby and the birds come and eat them. Hmm. Okay, so you're talking about a path and birds that eats the seeds, right? Lolo? Yeah, yes, I am. Okay, so what that means, boys and girls, this is where we hear the Word of God. So let's say, for instance, I or your teachers or your parents or Lolo and Vicky teaches you something about the Bible. And you go, hmm, that's very nice. But then you get into your car you drive off or you put the TV off and you go to the shopping center and then you forget all about what you've learned. That is the same way that what Lolo was talking about. So the seeds, that is the word of God, falls onto hard ground. So it falls onto our hearts and into our minds, but because we don't do anything about it and we forget about it, it goes away. And it's like the birds that eat those seeds. So that is the first one, is that we hear the word of God, but ugh, in a few seconds we've already forgotten what we have heard. All right, now let's go to the second seeds that were sown. Let's ask Vicky if she can remember what happened to those seeds. Oh, so the next seeds fell near some rocky ground. And the farmer had it a pile nearby. It was not much dirt around the rocks so that the seeds started to sprout and grow the next day. When the seed aren't planted in the dirt and they don't grow roots, which will help them stay strong and wait, and then they, they don't grow properly. Ah, yeah. so you say the seeds fell onto this rocky ground. So there yeah. was some soil, there was there some was dirt. There was some, but just a little bit. A little bit. Right. Yeah. And it could have got water, yes. and it got a little bit of sun, yes. which we need. Yeah. But when it actually got hotter during the day, hey, and because there wasn't enough soil for these roots of these little seeds to take root, they died. They now, died. boy, isn't it? Hey. Yes. Okay. Did. So what does that mean, boys and girls, for us? That means we hear the word of God. We are so excited. Yo, guys, but we're a little bit confused and we go, oh, I don't really understand it, but it was very good. I really like that. Now, what we should be doing is we should be asking questions. What about this? How does that work? How does Jesus love me? How does Jesus forgive me? But you know what? So the word for a while stays in our heart. We think about it a little bit and then we go, no, it's too confusing for me. I, I don't know. And you know, and then we don't even read our Bibles 
or we don't ask questions or we don't pray. Um, and then eventually after a few days, we completely, just like the first seeds that fell on the hard path, we also forget it. Because you see, boys and girls, what God wants us to do is when that little seed of, of God, that word of God falls into, the, into our hearts and into our minds, he doesn't want, because you know what, boys and girls, we can only tell you so much in the little bit of time that we are we spending with you. But now it's your job to go and ask more questions. It's your job to say to mom, can you read me that story again? Can you help me to understand that story a little bit better? I think I understood it, but I'm not sure. Or we, we, we have to pray. It's our job to pray and say, God, help me um, to understand your word. But you see what happens, boys and girls. We might do it for a day or two or maybe even three days. And then what happens? We forget to do it. And then those words that we learned, oh my gosh, it goes away. And that is what Vicky was talking about. It was planted in soil, but there wasn't enough soil for the word, the roots, to take uh, the seeds to take um, root in our hearts and minds. And then when the sun comes and it's very hot, guess what? Those seeds die. And the same with us. It goes out of our hearts. Okay, so now let's think about what happened in the third time. Where did he sow the third seeds? I mean, Lolo. Sorry, Lolo. <laughs> As the farmer continues to throw the seeds into the ground, mm -hmm. some of the seeds fell amongst the weeds and the ah. thorn that he hasn't pulled out. Okay. The thorn grow faster and taller than the seeds. So the seeds couldn't get enough sunlight and we shocked out by the, by the thorn. Okay, so what you are saying, uh, Lulz, is that the seeds fell on beautiful ground. Yes. But because the farmer didn't pull out the thorns and the weeds, mm -hmm. and we know, boys and girls, I have a big garden. Um, I live on a small holdings. And I don't know if you guys know, but I don't know why, but weeds and thorns grow so fast. Mm -hmm. My poor other plants, they grow, but they take their time. In the time that my plants grow this big, the thorn trees or the, the weeds have already grown this big. I don't understand this. But they grow very, very quickly and, very, and they grow lots. Mm -hmm. so, so what Lolo was telling us is that some of these seeds fell between on good soil, very good soil, and they fell on it um, and they started to grow. So that is like we're hearing the word of God. We understand the word of God and we're really growing in God. We're becoming more and more like God. We are walking in his footsteps. We're doing what he wants us to do. But then, guys, this thorns and these weeds that um, Lolo was talking about, those are the things that distracts us. Now, that's a big word, boys and girls. That means that takes us away from God. And it could be, guys, you know what? It could be things that we're doing at school. Maybe you love sports. And now you are swimming for the first, you are swimming in the, you know, you're in the league. And now they say, oh, oh you have to do your swimming on a Sunday. Wow. Now what? Or you play soccer, but now they change your soccer practice to a Sunday. And you see, boys and girls, you might be growing beautifully in God. But then here comes things from outside, like the thorns and the weeds, and they start choking you. And you go, I, can't, I have to choose between sports and, and God. And, and you know, it becomes so confusing for you. Otherwise, you might be worried. Maybe you're worried about a sick parent. Maybe you are worried about your parents that are getting divorced. Maybe you are worried because mom and dad lost their jobs. And this worry keeps on choking you. It becomes bigger than the word of God. Or, you know what guys, people make fun of you at school when they hear that you are a Christian and you serve God. They make fun of you. Then you decide, uh-uh, no, 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 I'm rather not going to say anything, do anything, and maybe I shouldn't even be a Christian. And you see, boys and girls, all those things start choking us like the weeds and the thorns. And eventually, that that was planted in our hearts die. And so that is the third one. And so, Vicky, what was the last one? 
The last one was those seeds that were thrown into a good soil. Ah. Where the farmer dug the soil and there was enough water, enough sunlight, everything was just perfect. Yeah. And then these those plants they grew bigger and bigger and then they produced lots and lots of vegetables and seeds. Yes, that's beautiful. Um, Vicky, that's exactly what happens. You see, when, when that, um, that fig tree from last week, do you remember? Mm -hmm. I think that farmer, that the gardener went and he pruned that tree. I think he dug around that soil. I think he even maybe got more compost, if you ask me. And then he watered that plant and I believe and I think you guys, we talked about it last week. We believe that when that um, owner came back a year later, that fig tree was giving fruit. And you see, that's exactly what Vicky was saying about the seeds as well. You see, when we plant our the word of God in good soil, so there's no thorns, there's no um, weeds, it's not um, rocky ground, it's not a solid path, but it's like compost, beautiful, oh, smelly um, ground that is rich in minerals and, and vitamins. And then our little seed, the word of God, falls into our hearts. Just think of your heart as being that beautiful field with that beautiful sand, our uh, soil, sorry. And you know what? When that plant then starts growing, there's nothing in its way. And how do we do that? We read our Bible every day. We pray, we worship, we give, we are generous. We come to church, we learn, we ask questions. We do all of those things, boys and girls. And as we're doing that, we become stronger and bigger and bigger and bigger in God. And then, you know what, boys and girls? I believe that, yes, we also bear fruit. But you know what? Other people, when our seeds then grow into beautiful trees and there's the fruit of the Spirit and other people take that, you know what? It's like we are filling up heaven for Jesus with our field of our one little seed. We can fill up heaven for God. And you see, boys and girls, because a plant will yield 100 times more seeds, 60 times more seeds, 30 times more seeds than just the one little seed that was sown into good soil. So boys and girls, come on, you and I can make a difference out there. We can be God's oh, seeds for other people. Hey, we can go and, and say to people, don't you, can you see God loves you? God, you see, because when we know the word of God, we can share the word of God with others. Also, people can see us and they see God radiantly shining through us and then they go wow I want to be like Vicky I want to be like Lolo what have they got how do they get that and then we talk to them about Jesus and because we know the word of God we can say to them you know what God loves you God forgives you God died on the cross for you God protects you we're going to have everlasting life with him and that means we will never die but hey you have to love God you have to ask Jesus to come and live in your heart in his heart in your heart he never leaves us he never forsakes us you see boys and girls but you can only speak like Vicky and Lolo and myself if you read your Bible every day when you pray when you worship when you come to church and learn so I hope this week, the three of us hope this week, that you will get your soil of your heart right. Be like that good soil. And this week, it's only three weeks before Easter. Really, really prepare your hearts, guys, so that you can accept the word of God that he says he loves you, he forgives you, he died on the cross for you. And most importantly, that you are able in the next three, four weeks to share that with other people. Well, I hope you enjoyed our lesson about the sower. We are now going to go off to the Doodle Studio and we hope you're going to love the craft that we have for you today. But we will be back here next week with another beautiful story about Easter and on our lane journey. All right, are you guys ready to go to the Doodle Studio? Have lots of fun. What do we say, guys? Bye! Bye. Welcome back, boys and girls. Now remember, before we start our craft, remember how to do it. Just do it, doodle kids. Okay, so Vicky, hello Vicky. Vicky is going to help us this morning to do our very first craft. So let's go down and see what our craft looks like. Now remember, boys and girls, what we need to do is, is ask our parents to go to our kids' website. Now, try and find, or mom can find it, if you're battling, 
to find this page that has a sewer and who's got a very strange picture that is in a very strange square shape. Now, once you've got that, then you need a pair of scissors, you need some coloring in pencils, you need a paper fastener, and then you are ready and set to go. Now, remember, boys and girls, the very first thing we need to do is to cut out our picture. Now, to save some time, Vicky has already cut out the picture for us, and she's already colored in the picture. All right, so she's colored in. Now, what we have there, boys and girls, is the four different types of soil that we have learned about today. Firstly, we learned about the path where the birds came and fetched and um, picked up the, the seeds. Then the rocky ground where the seed only grew for a little bit, but because the roots couldn't take root, they couldn't grow. And then we have the one with the thorn, which is on the other side of our picture. And remember, that's the thorns and the wheat grew faster than our plants. And that was all the worrying. And then lastly, we have the beautiful seeds that grow and grow and flourish and they produce lots of vegetables and fruits and more seeds for us to plant. So that's what's on the four sides of this very strange square. So boys and girls, what you now need to do is, is to go and fold those four areas. You'll see there is a dotted line there. Please go and go and fold it on that dotted line. Fold it on the dotted line for us. There we go. See how Vicky is folding it on the dotted line. There we go. And then you can make it stand up. Fold it on that dotted line. Very good. Okay. Now it's the farmer's ground all four in one. And then we have the farmer, boys and girls, that is next to it. And can you see there is also there's also a dotted line. Now fold it on that dotted line. That's it. Now we have like a semicircle that is in front of our farmer. Now what we're going to do is, is to put a hole through where there's that round black dot. Boys and girls, please ask an older sibling or your parents or guardians to help you. You can do it with a sharp pencil or something sharp. And then you'll see there's also a black hole in the middle of our field and we do the same thing as poke a hole through but please boys and girls ask a sub older sibling or your parents guardians to do it for you now take your paper fastener and what we're going to do is we're first going to put our paper fastener through the hole of our um, ground in front of our farmer or our sower and then through the next hole inside of our field okay turn it around and make sure that your little fastener's legs are open at the back so that it can securely hold it. Now, boys and girls, when Vicky turns it around, she's gonna put her, pop her farmer up straight and look what she can do. She can hold the farmer at the top and she can swivel him so that he can sow the, the, the seeds. There, he sows it on the path. Then she's gonna swivel him. There we go, now he's doing something else. I can't see what that one is. And then, oh, I think that's the one with the prop, the, with the birds. And then he's, she's going to turn it and he's going to sew there where the thorns are. And then she's going to turn it. Oh, look, there's, oh, look at all the, oh, there's the rocky ground. And so this farmer is just spreading those seeds all over his land in the four different areas. How cool is this craft, boys and girls? Look at that. They zoom out a little bit so that they can see nicely, Adam. Zoom out, zoom out. There we go. Look at that. The farmer's turning, the farmer's turning. Look at that. Ah, I just love this craft, boys and girls. And you can put it on your desk for the whole of the Lent period before Easter to remind ourselves that we must make sure that our soil, which is our hearts, are ready to hear and accept the words of God and make them grow deep inside of us so that not only do we grow, but other people will want to be and have it and also grow in Jesus so that they can also love God and go to heaven one day. All right, boys and girls, that's our first craft. Let's go to our next craft. Welcome back, boys and girls. Hello, Lors. You're going to do our second craft today for our sower. 
Now, boys and girls, let's go see what picture you need to go and find on the kids' website. So, please go help ask your parents to help you find this beautiful flower. Now, boys and girls, why did we choose a flower? Do you remember what it said um, at the end of our story? That the seeds produced vegetables or fruit or seeds 30, um, sorry, 100 times, 60 times, 30 times more than ever. So this is one of our fruits, a flower, a beautiful flower it's that, that produced from one of those seeds that was planted. Hey, because we don't know exactly what pl seeds he planted, boys and girls. It could have been millies, it could have been flowers, it could have been whatever. So this is a beautiful flower that was produced from that seed. Right, so what are we going to do with this? Just to, uh, to help you remember that we need to make sure that our hearts and our soils are ready to receive the Word of God so that we can grow into these beautiful, beautiful flowers or fruit or, or vegetables. Hey, And then what we need to do is, is also share um, our fruits and our vegetables and our seeds with other people. Okay, so what we need to do is, we're not going to cut anything, we are going to do the following two things. We can take our plant, um, our picture, and then we've got a proper leaf, guys, and what we're going to do with this leaf is, this is one option you can do, is put the leaf underneath your page, underneath it, make sure it lines up with your picture of your, um, of your leaf, and then, guys, you take a pick, you take a, a green pencil, and then you press sort of hard, hard, hard until you can see the outline of the leaf. And we're going to ask Adam to go right to the front and ask the Lord to lift it up so that you guys can see the the, the leaves, um, the outline of the leaf. Look at that! There's all the outlines of the leaf. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that that you can actually see the outline of the leaf at the bottom. So go into your garden. That's what we're going to do at Muddy Church this week, guys. We are going to go outside. We're going to pick one of those leaves and we're going to make our leaves look like that. Okay, then what we need to do is we are going to take glue and we're going to put a lot of glue all over our picture. And guys, please make sure you put glue everywhere, over the pe petals and in the center of our cheek. Okay, because what we're now going to do is, you guys at home can take any seeds from your um, mom's pantry, guys. We have some um, popcorn seeds and we have some beautiful orange lentils. So we're going to pop some popcorn leaves, uh, seeds in the middle of our, um, our flower. Because remember, this is where, when this flower dies, the middle of the of the center of the flower is usually the seed that gets replanted um, and grows. And then we're going to just make our little um, petals very colorful by sprinkling some. We've got lentils, but you guys can use anything. And if you don't have leaves, don't worry. You can just literally color in your, your flower beautifully. Or you could even take pieces of, small pieces of um, cut up color paper and you can decorate your seeds, your plant beautifully. And our Lolo mustn't forget to go and color in her stem a beautiful green. She's now forgot to color in her, her stem of our leaf, of, of our flower. There she goes. She's doing the final, final touches there. Okay. And you can just press gently, guys, on your seeds just to make sure they are really stuck in nicely on those petals and also in the middle where the seeds are of the plant. And then voila, there is one of our, there is one, there's our flower that we saw, guys, that was grown. There we go, so it says that God's word bears fruit in me. So guys, next to you, maybe you can put it on the fridge or somewhere where you can see it for length period. But we must remember that we need to plant and we must make sure that the soil of our hearts are ready to, when we hear the word of God, um, that it takes root, deep root in our hearts and that we never forget what God teaches us in his word. And then the most important thing is, is that we allow God to shine through us and we bear spiritual fruit, which is like kindness, um, gentleness, patience, joy, love, and that we share that with other people. 
All right, boys and girls, thank you, Lolo. You were such a good help today. We are now going to say goodbye to you, but before we do that, remember how to doodle it. Just doodle it. Doodle it. Say goodbye, Lolo.